Okay. Um, when you're going to solve this one, folks, you should probably draw a free body diagram and show where all the forces are that are acting on the beam. We are not interested at any points up here because that's not touching the beam. Now, if it gave an angle up there that we need to use to find about a different angle, that's fine. But don't focus on that. We should just end up drawing the beam and drawing the things that are coming in and touching it. So this cable's coming in and touching it, and it's coming in at uh, 30 degrees. And we'll call that a tension, T. And they have a mass hanging from here, and it's a mass of 280 kilograms. So right here, we could write down 200, the force of gravity on that, but I kind of like, uh, just doing the 280 times 9.8 and getting the number right in our free body diagram this time. 2744. So 2744 newtons. So that's a force pulling down at that point. And there's a tension T. And we don't know, we know this angle. There's another force acting on it. That's the force of gravity of the beam itself. So that's acting at the center of gravity. And that's pulling down 25 times 9.8, 245. And we're going to label the pivot point, so I'll do it in another color here. We're going to put the pivot point over here, but we'll see why we would do that in a second. Now there's other forces. There's other forces that we haven't done before because we put the pivot point at that location to get rid of those forces when we were calculating the torques. But now we're not going to. We're going to actually try to figure out what those forces are. Okay? Now, it just imagine that this wall right there is made out of glass. Well, that beam is going to be pulled through that wall. Why? Well, there's a force. The beam's going in there. But if it's held firmly against that wall, there's going to be a force pushing out on that. There's going to be a force pushing onto the beam in that direction to keep it from going through that wall. So that's the force of the wall in the x direction. Okay, so now we make the wall out of brick, but we don't attach it there. In fact, we put uh, vegetable oil all over the brick and make it very slippery, and that beam is going to slip up or down. We're not going to attach it at that point. Yes, it will slip up or down. In fact, I believe that the weight of this beam here, pulling this down, will cause this beam to slip down. Okay, this kind of is attached there, so it's not going to, but the beam is going to slip down. So I believe that there's a, s a force upwards up here. Now that's the one that I believe, I don't know for sure, in the y direction. If I draw my arrow upward like that, and then when I finish my calculations and I find it's negative, then it was just down. It's not a biggie. That one I'm not sure of. I can tell for sure that the F wall is out and not into the wall, okay? The, the wall is not pulling the beam in, it's pushing it away from the wall. So I'm now gonna draw these two into my free body diagram. I'll do them in blue. So there's the F of the wall in the X direction. And my guess is upwards, F of the wall in the Y direction. So I now have Five. Five forces acting on this beam. Okay? And, oh, yeah, five forces, and three of them I don't know. And we want to find them all. Okay? So we're going to use these three steps up here, and I'm going to start off in the order that I presented them way back when, the sum of the forces first and in the x direction. So I'll start off with 
the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Okay, what does that mean? Well, there's only two forces acting in the x direction. I'm going to break this t into two direct two dimensions. I'm going to have the force going up and the force going this way. And that one is t uh, upward will be sine 30. And this one will be the adjacent, so this will be t cosine 30. Okay, I've kind of made a mess of my free body diagram a bit, but I'll leave it like that. So now in the x direction, I only have two forces. The two forces I have is the force of the wall pushing to the right and the tension component pushing to the left. And that means they have to balance because the sum of the forces equals zero. So the force of the wall in the x direction has to equal T cosine 30. Okay, and cosine 30 is 0.866. So the force of the wall in the x direction is equal to T times 0 0.866. Now I'm going to do the sum of the forces in the y. So sum of the forces in the y equals 0. That'll give me that's um, let's do it. The upward forces T sine theta, T sine 30 and F of the wall. So F of the wall in the y direction plus T sine 30 those are the up ones, and the down ones have to balance. That's uh, 245 newtons, and that is basically the uh, force of gravity of the beam plus 2744 newtons, and that's the force of gravity of the mass at the end. Okay, if I add those two numbers up, what do I get? Um, 9892. So 2989 newtons. Okay, and that sine of 30 is a half, so I'll just rewrite it down just not so big. Force on the wall in the y direction plus one half t, because that's what sine of 30 is, is a half, is equal to 2989 newtons. So I have two little functions here. I have the force of the wall in the x equals t times this number, and the force of the wall in the y plus half t equals that number. So if I found the tension in that cable, then I could find both of those forces. And like our previous example from the previous day, we can find that tension by putting the pivot point at this location. Why do we put it at that location? Because those two forces, the force of the y, force of the wall in the y, and the force of the wall in the x, disappear because the torque takes the distance to the pivot point from that force and that distance is zero in both of those cases so when we do the sum of the torques we have to put the pivot point there else we'll still have two unknowns okay so we'll go back to the sum of the torques equals zero what does that mean well, that means the counterclockwise torques have to equal the clockwise torques. And since we put the pivot point here, the ones that are going to do counterclockwise 
is only the tension. Okay? So the tension times the sine of the angle times how far away it is. Or ten the, the tension. Mm, actually, let's just do it in steps. I don't want to skip so much here. How about the torque caused by the tension is equal to the other torques. The torque, torque caused by the beam plus the torque caused by the mass hanging at the end. Now, remember, torque is equal to force times the distance times the sine of the angle between that force and the distance. Because those are vectors. So, the, the tension times the distance away from the pivot point it is, and that distance is, I guess, this distance is 1.1 meters, and this distance is 1.1, so the whole beam is 2.2. 2.2 meters times the sine of the angle, sine 30, is equal to the beam's torque, that's force, <coughs> it comes in here at a right angle, so we don't have to worry about the sine in this case, the sine becomes, the sine of 90 becomes 1. So the force is 245 newtons times the distance away it is, which is 1.1 meters. And the mass has a force of gravity down of 2744 newtons. And its distance away is, again, 2.2 meters, just like the tension. So if you are observant, we have an equation here with only one unknown in it. So there's lots of numbers in here. And if you're a math type, you could see that it has a common factor of 1.1. We could probably take the 1.1 out of everywhere if we wanted to. But I'll pretend we're not a math type to observe that we could get rid of the 1.1s. That's just two of them. So 2.2 times 30 sine is 1.1. So this is going to be T <coughs> times 1.1 is equal to, hmm? What's wrong with that guy? <laughs> 245, he had too much for lunch. Times 1.1 is 269.5. And that'll be Newton meters. And this number. 2744 times 2.2 is that number 6036.8 newton meters so when i add these together plus 269.5 i get 6306.3 And this is in meters. The units will cancel out of meters. So the tension will be in that. So the tension here is just going to equal this number divided by 1.1, 5733. We have one of the unknowns. OK. We're going to take that number and we're going to use it up here to solve that. So half of that divided that by 2 so the force of the wall in the y direction is going to equal 2989 subtract 2866.5 2986.5
2866.5. So the force of the wall in the y direction is going to equal hundred twenty two point five not very much so that's why we're kinda a little unsure which direction it was but it's upwards so this wall is pushing up on the beam to keep it in that location with hundred and twenty two point five newtons and the last one that we have to figure out is what is this force of the y force of the wall in the y direction force of the wall in the y direction is going to equal that number so 5733 three times the cosine of 30 times 30 cosine so it equals 4965 So these are the, the wall's components of the force. Okay, so that problem is solved. Okay. We have solved for the three unknowns, the tension in the cable, the force of the wall up and the force of the wall to the right. And we were only given two numbers, or three numbers, I guess the angle and the two masses. Any questions? This is on Moodle already. I don't know if I, I made it visible yet, but it's, it's there.